welcome and good morning in this wonderful world of cyber security. I'm very happy to be here as somebody from the leisure industry, somebody who's not really part of your industry as such. But nevertheless, I'm also busy in the field. We've already been hacked device. on our device. Uh, That's a pity. Uh, welcome to Siberia. Donc so welcome to Siberia. As Adrien has said, I'm going to tell you about a few aspects that are uh, related between your world, what's happening, the uh, paradigm shift that's happening in cyber security, and what I've been living for 40 years in the field of the media and the deep paradigm shifts that we've known, and you'll see if there are some parallels to make. I'm the son of an IT expert, somebody who was uh, busy with applied mathematics at uh, GE and the NASA. That was my father. My father used to bring me, when I was a child, in the lab of uh, GE to understand what it was all about, to get used to some languages, and I was exciting about, excited about the idea of learning a new language and a new industry. Then later on, I was in a faculty in Philadelphia, I had to call my parents every Sunday, which cost a lot, so I learned how to hack the uh, AT&T system to talk with my parents, with the landline, and that was a little bit my the way I dived into the industry. Today I'm committed to the NC, my teams and I we work a lot there. You'll see more about it later on. I'm very close to the cyber campus. For me, that is the showcase of communication for the future in France. Agora 41, which is a French think tank of the ANSI, with many issues dealt with around the cyber space. And then I'm a colonel of uh, uh, space army and air army, so that in these worlds, in addition to the media, I can get to learn more about different cultures, universes, languages, and know more about what's happening for the time being. My life, I've experienced a, a dramatic paradigm shift. When I started, it was in a TV station, Télé Monte Carlo, who uh, was uh, belonging to um, Monaco. Prince Paltry, and we were doing a little bit of what we wanted, but we had no money. So we had to be very creative. So that we hacked an Atari device to create an online game with phones. On the bottom you had numbers and so on. And that really showed me that everything was possible in a world that we could create in our space and that we could invent it all. Then I left for the US, where I understood the power of the brand. I worked there for a company that was busy with the production of toys, among others. And 24 months later, there was a line of robot toys that had to be launched. The company was to spend a lot of money in advertising. So I told them, instead of spending so much money, maybe you can give me half of, half of it and we'll have some animations to explain that Robotech range that we sold all over the world. Instead of sending four million or spending four million dollars, they saved 80. So that was really the power of storytelling in all fields, and especially with toys, to sell them to an audience and children. And in France, uh, the turn to private TV learned, uh, taught me that uh, you can also um, sell rock and roll to um, the US. And in many fields, it was the case. So that creativity, the power of knowing who you address to, the power of knowing that language's audience 
communities, populations are extremely different from one place to another, and that you need to adapt to their own language. And then the UK, where with Richard Branson, we could start tens of programs. And we brought a different perspective or pace or style. I was young at the time. I did not see what I wanted to see on TV. And that's what we invented. And that's what we wanted to experience, especially in the UK, with some uh, success, with an Antoine de Gaulle who was uh, speaking English with a French accent, and all that on the BBC in premium time. Everything was possible. But there was also the possibility of being ubiquitous. We could be French and start going elsewhere. Because the cultural language that we were telling had uh, an echo to the Italian, the German, the British, and in the 16 countries where we <coughs> sold our products. Then the technological uh, mutation. Uh, the thematic uh, channels, the cable channels, arrived in France. We didn't have much money once again, so that we had to pull together technology to be able to do things at an affordable price. Then another change at Canal Plus, where I was in charge of the group strategy. And then Vivendi Net, the media channel, where we were learning in a world of 128K, okay, how we could migrate some content from an interactive TV channel through a phone and through the web. It sounds basic and uh, ridiculous now, but at that time, it was a seamless world and it was totally new. So we had to talk differently. We had to recruit different people. And that's also something that I learned. The more the mutations were there and the paradigm shifts, the more new people you need. When I started with TV, that was the time of uh, Gilux. If you are abroad, just let me tell you that he was one of the pillars of old TV. When I joined the industry, when I was 21, we needed to go and find different competencies. And it was very complicated. It was complicated to break the glass ceiling and as Canal Plus to state that we had to do things differently, show the difference and attract more people and more talents. Then I could understand what uh, storytelling was all about, having films with uh, Alain Chabat. We were co-producers of uh, Mission Cleopatra with uh, Asterix and the idea of the parallel processing in TV. That means having plenty of different brains all together. Move forward, progress, do better, and faster with people working in a team all together. And that was a major change. It was already the case in other countries, but it was very important in France. Burger Quiz, 22 years ago, there were many authors around the table who were due to find uh, jokes. All along the day, a major change. MMI, who was there with Enjoy, and then there came the time of the change where the production oligarchs, my company, we had an ambition. It was to change the industrial process and the way we could tell about fiction. We had discovered what was happening in Israel, in Scandinavia, in the UK, in the US, and we thought, why not us? That was in 2010. We had to adapt, adapt what we wanted to do to a totally different world. And this is what you are experiencing now in cyber and cybersecurity, a massive and fast development of that world, ubiquity because we are all connected, and the perception for different people, for different audiences. And that's an additional complexity. You are a media, you are a world, and you need to understand that the engineer who did uh, seven years uh, higher studies is an extraordinary talent, but there are others 
useful, important and necessary ça, people. Bah, voilà, and to explain that, what was uncommon and expensive was bah, brandwidth. When I joined, the state controlled that brandwidth, controlled puis, dissemination, bah, voilà, canal est arrivé, and then Canal the was there, and they was uh, programming on clear, and they used uh, the channel, the network of the state. But then it was 100 times less expensive to have a channel with the satellites, so more people, more talents could join in a world that was extremely complicated. And then we arrived, that was in 2008, we started working, and we thought, the world is changing. Why that? Because there are new offers that are less linear. And also, these new people are coming in our market with a, an extraordinary specificity. You pay for the brand with the network, that's you. It's extraordinary. So we're going to focus on the customer interface, the algorithms, and then the rest will be paid by the audience. So a deep paradigm shift. We needed to invent and uh, there was something that was disseminated in 2015 in a world that has, had started to change dramatically because we could quietly, with our smartphone, with our iPhone, with our mobile, in the comfort of your living room, you could disseminate a program. It changes it all, and the way Donc, of telling the story changes it all as well. Cool. The French situation was pretty cool. Était, voilà, there were many players. Everybody was getting uh, organized. We knew in the big groups uh, how dit, things moi, were happening. And then somebody came and said, I'm tu not playing je, your je rules. I'm not going to sign any agreement. And the Americans, you know, are the strongest to invent the process and establish the rules straight ahead. And in France and in Europe, people kept saying, I won't sign a deal with the state, I won't be regulated until there is a critical mass. And when I'll have a critical mass, I can start debating. That's our current world. That's a dramatic change. And what does it mean? It means we don't write the stories the same way. And films are no longer the same either. Netflix announced 52 new films per year in the US, 52 international films on the platform. It's not the same experience. We are not in one room as here, and not in one room listening to an old guy as I am. Really, the experience changes. And the way to write changes, the audience, the way people receive a message also changes. So it's really significant to understand a change that took place on TV. Because the critical mass of newcomers, their means, determine the standards. Et donc, ça a été le cas dans la télé. That was the case on TV. Maybe milieu. there will be new things in your industry as well. It's an aspect of sovereignty for TV. We need to regulate mêmes, things in a way uh, because we don't have the same budgets. And at the same time, there is the content, the control of the assets, where are the servers, what's happening, and do we have enough money in a country, in a system, or does the money leave elsewhere? Do we transfer uh, rights? Do we transfer licenses as, as, as well? Same thing for the GAFAs. We were a critical mass. I was always amazed by the ICAM. I have to buy that in a, from a private company, an American one, but it's not only that. Google, you have a standardized advertising space, and you have to adapt to it. So there is a whole reflection. We're not, not less intelligent than others, on the contrary, but we have an ecosystem which is economic, legal, of regulation, and public, which is complex. And we wait a little bit for the market to be, to be there, and we bear with it. And it's a real problem. Bear with it or not, that's the question. So there are disruptions, because the people who came to France have come on the margin 
vendaient Amazon used to sell something, something else at the beginning. Tens of billions of turnover are there for selling products. Apple sells hardware. And Disney had many other vertical ranges. And when they arrived, it's just like others. They come not playing with the same drums, the same rules, and not exactly in the same verticality of a system or a market. And I have the feeling that it's also what's happening, and I'm talking here about sovereignty, When we have a look at cyber security with markets dominating players, there is some complexity if some companies don't come from the Western world or Europe, but from elsewhere. And that's also where we discover the limits and the importance of that out power. Let me come back to what I know best, the Bureau des Légendes. If you don't know it, it's a series about French intelligence, and it's a love story that's happening within the DGSE, and we explain, we show what realistically is the life of French intelligence or the geopolitics of France based on the service. Let's have a few pictures for you to understand if you don't know what it is. Ça, c'est N. Ça, c'est N-1, N-2, N-3, N-4. La DGSE, c'est N-10. On arrête tout s'ils arrivent à N-5. C'est parti. Oh putain. Pas des Ukrainiens. Ils sont forts, les salauds. Honestly, uh, this was for us a deep dive into the cyber universe. We learned a lot. It was very complicated to do something realistic and even more complicated and very boring to film computer screens. So it's always a story of people, and these people need to carry uh, things and present a point of view, partly the cyber attack that we had to film. Uh, we needed to find a way to present the cyber universe to understand what the complexity and the tension of this industry is and to put it in front of a less informed uh, audience that would follow the story. That was very important. So what we are doing today, what we were doing then, you have an idea, you need to find the product and the system around which um, Uh, we film an industrial process as far as we are concerned. We had 10 episodes per year. This did not exist in France, so we needed to find an industrial production method that we had to invent by trying to get the best talents to do this and uh, uh, make it uh, pedagogically. And also create a brand, an emotional engagement brand where people would come, people, people come back for 50 hours, five years, 50 episodes, and that is very complex. It's very fragile, very complicated. Le bureau des légendes, c'était ça. That was the Bureau des Légendes, uh, the TV series. We went to see the French uh, um, intelligence community to try to get them uh, to pick their brains. You had to be very creative because they're normally they're not supposed to talk. Okay, we were kind of saying why, why we French could not do a TV series with a, in, a, in a genre in an industry that's very strongly dominated by the English-speaking market, a yearly recurrence, 10 episodes per year. No one had done it 
the BBC. Seven years, um, and this brand that we had to manage the fragility of the brand, that was very important. Our system was simple, one idea, a concept or in which we film, a new environment which we introduce the audience to, and people um, that actors that built this universe, and these are, and they are the ones basically holding up and holding the entire concept together. That's our magical formula, uh, magical recipe. When well, we needed to talk about the experts in the field, we called them, the ministry, and they put us in contact with people from the DGSE. Said, we even we, you don't you don't want to talk to us. We have no way to verify. So we're going to do a protocol in exchange of your logo. So real, realistic. You tell us if it's plausible or not. If it's not plausible, we have creative heads, ten copywriters who are going to reinvent things for it to become plausible. And of course, some things that were inherent to our agreement with the DGSE, with the French security industry. We at work, we are the French champions in terms of exporting a TV. We have about 120 countries that have bought the series and many, many more people in the outside of France who look at Le Bureau des Légeurs, especially in the US and or in Russia or in Taiwan. This has completely gone over our head, but it's fantastic to be able to say that we were in a source code that culturally spoke to people, and uh, that is important. We explained to an environment that was completely fantasized about saying, okay, this is, what, this is what you fantasize, but this is what the real life looks like. And it was a critical success, a fantastic uh, commercial success. And for the French um, intelligence industry, it's 400% qualified recruitment. That's a huge young people will say, I'm interested by working. Now I understand better how you work. I think I could contribute something to this uh, in this area. And that was extremely important. Uh, it wasn't our role. Our role, we were just wanted to make good TV and, uh, in a specific genre, which was a spy movie and telling it differently on, with, from a French point of view. But it's true that the French intelligence services have benefited from um, hugely from it, not uh, not just the DGSE, but we had lots, we made lots of friends, uh, all the intelligence services around us, we have big fans, and um, that is quite interesting to have friends in high places in these areas in the intelligence industry. And of course, and what we were doing, uh, the um, government was uh, interested and we worked with Monsieur Le Briand, who was back the def in defense minister to make this uh, idea of national defense and the citizenship more clear. We need to give the defense needs to be put in the hands of authors, of copywriters, so that the public can understand what it means working for the national defense. It can, it can ampli amplify, we can talk about uh, the reality, and both sides can benefit from it. As he said, there is no soft power, there is only hard power, and um, we were able to implement a system that works extremely well between the defense ministry and the producers, the clowns and artists uh, that we are. In the US, uh, the defense ministry of defense has been doing this for the past 100 years. It's not Something new. They are the first collaborator uh, with Hollywood, being in terms of means and technology, also in terms of messaging uh, or ori moral orientation or policy orientation. So this is a system that's extremely well worked. In the US, they do it very well. We invent a domain, we create the process, we create the norms, the standards, and we sell it well. The last 
mile, where in France we're not necessarily good uh, in selling. We're really good in any other in all other feet. But once we have done, the, once we bake the cake, we said, okay, uh, they'll come. To, it's going to sell itself. No, that's the problem we have in France. I um, that was a case in the media, and we had to change that. Uh, and we, since we changed it, particularly for the Bureau de Légende, the, uh, the digital marketing and communication promotion, there was complex. The first time that a French series was going to be present in 120 countries, so we needed to manage this brand and the way we would present this product in an extremely different way. And at the same time, we were talking about the same thing, very complicated. So it's a plan that is just as important as the script. And actually, the MDC plan strategy is thought out. It's designed at the same time as you, as you design the script. How does this apply to you, to your cybersecurity world? How do we, how does this link up with the cybersecurity world? Well, this work is, world is incredible. And among us, we are here at the heart of this. Everyone is not just concerned, but needs to have the responsibility of knowing. And uh, this, in the world in which we are today, in this entire connectivity, in this absolute connectivity, you need, the audience needs to be more aware of the challenges of which you are the gatekeepers today and the actors. Make widening the scopes means understand that you need to have a digital hygiene, a cyber security hygiene. It's fundamental. It's not just to fix. We need to predict. We, people need to be aware. They need to uh, prepare, not fix. So. It was important to be able to put at the service of the cause, of the cyber cause, through the ANSI, a brand that already had an emotional commitment. A brand like the Bureau de Légende, how are they used by doing small messages like this that are usually um, very effective, very present in the world in which we are. So this emotional commitment, this is, these are brands which we create. We are brands, the situations which we are, these are brands. This commitment of the cyber and cyber security, that's what it is. And the Americans do this uh, because um, not just the Americans, but, but they're really good at, the, at it. But there's other sectors in the luxury industry, in the music industry, <clears throat> of course, the leisure industry, TV, movies, all these are brands that commit, engage. I'm willing to devote time to it. I want to feel something by devoting time to it. And it's the same that's going to happen to other brands, especially in the cyber industry. So we, when we want to, when we created this brand, in short time, how does it in emotional engagement fundamental become something important for everyone? So... This is what, how we amplify, how we try to broadcast as a feeling. We're going to create brands, values, understand the complexity of all the environments. What, that's what we're trying to do internally and externally. The way we're going to amplify this is this is fragile. We need to think this from the beginning, the last mile. How are we going to promote this? So, of course, this needs skills. It's a tone of voice, it's values, it's diversity. We're going to focus more young women because they're a big minority, not just techies uh, or geeks, which we're going to take out of the same place because everyone is trying to uh, fish in the same pond. We're going to have to look elsewhere differently. This is what we did with TV. Canal Plus, that's what it was in 1984. We went to get other talents, people from other fields, other points of view, in order to teach them a new way of doing. And this is important, not just with people who are in this area, but also economical stakeholders, institutional stakeholders, etc. And uh, we have a system that is uh, very simple, that is remark. And uh, with very simple systems, we do this in TV, and it's the same with you. It's the same in your area. And this is important to think about this from the beginning in your area um, in order to amplify this. Um, and so in France, the 
entry level brand will be the cyber campus where everyone, at least in France, will um, be able to find a shop window and where the audience is going to come and start getting informed daily of what is going on and of the thousands of attacks happening in real time. It's scary, but you need to know about this. You can't just put your head in the sand. Well, just as we've seen it during the pandemic, they're going to maintain a background noise on the importance of cyber, of having toolboxes and concrete things to show to the audience. And then, of of course, this uh, chamber of res um, resonance uh, will be important. The sounding chamber will be important. We are all here in a healthy competition. It's a co-competition, cooperation and competition. But you need to think about the simple way of communicating together the cyber campus that will be our point of entry, I'm sure, in France. And this background noise can be done also differently. And this differently... If that's my role, my trade. I'm a producer, I produce brands, I build brands, and I'm announcing you here solemnly here in Lille today that we're going to create a new brand that's called Siberia. This is a series which we're developing actually with some French copywriters and from other countries. And here again, we need you. We need your stories, we need to be fed on the opportunities, on the extent of everything this meets, on the culture, in order to explain to the wider audience the situation, tense and complex situation of the cyber universe and of cyber security in our country. This is important. We are building it at the moment. This is a call. I'm calling to you, to your I'm calling up to your experience. We are already talking with many people. What we want to do is to speak everywhere as qualified people so that we can really tell a story, a narrative, and insert it in a realistic presentation and get a maximum of people to understand this digital hygiene that you need to have. I think I have reached the end of my allotted time. I hope it was interesting for you. In any case, thank you for the time you've devoted to me.